as you can see hands off the wheel it's gonna steer me or guide me into the next set of 12 rows which should be the outside 12 here that way we can keep on loading on the go welcome back to the channel today is day number 15 of corn harvest today I'm gonna be running the grain cart we're also gonna be going back and forth to the yard that way we can be top filling the last of the bins and we're now getting Bob's ripper ready we got a lot of stuff going on today at the farm and there goes Bob off for a day of ripping And there he goes with the combine. I'll follow with the grain cart to the field we're going to. I'll show you guys when we get to a new field that we haven't combined any yet so far this year. We have to what we call open a field. So I'll show you what guys what that looks like. How we can get the trucks in and out prior to opening up the field. Here's one thing we did this off season that I like in the grain cart is we have a backup camera. Since it's so hard in the mirror to see if somebody's trying to get around you on the road. Now we have a camera in here in the cab so we can always see behind the cart. He's getting the combine ready to start taking out the headlands. The reason we have headlands on it is since all the rows, kind of like our neighbor's field here, they go straight north and south. But for us to turn at the ends with the large equipment, we have to have rows that go east and west, similar to this road. And you'll see that easier with the drone, but he's gonna start taking off the headlands to make room in the field. For me with the grain cart and Gary with the semi. This corn's been standing here a long time. So a lot of the tops and tassels are starting to break down. It's pretty easy. You can come in here, kick down the stalks, but as you can tell, none of it's laying on the ground. So that's a good sight. We're gonna get it all into the grain tank and into the bin, but it's time to be done with corn because this stuff's starting to degrade pretty quick. The job of the combine is to take ears of corn like this, run it through the head, and turn them into cobs like this out the back, and put the grain in the grain tank. Currently unloading across the ditch. I'm on the road, he's in the field. This way he doesn't have to run down as much corn with the 12 row head to make room for me. It only works in fields where we have shallow ditches like this one, but it works pretty good when it does. As you guys can see, Dad's taking off the outermost 48 rows of the field. This way we'll have the farm, what we call, opened up and we can then bring the semis in and load the semis with the grain cart in the field. I got my first loaded grain cart of the day. Now I gotta swing the auger out. We're thinking since this was such a shallow ditch, we're actually gonna load the trucks on the road. This road's hardly ever used, so it shouldn't cause any traffic issues. So get that auger swung up. Gary should be coming around the section. We'll get him loaded up. It's definitely tougher to load on the road because the semi is sitting up about three foot higher than what it would be in the field. But by using my camera and being able to tilt the spout and adjust the spout in a couple of different ways, it makes it a lot easier to load the semi front to back. Now that we're done with the headlands, we'll be able to turn around here at the end. So dad's gonna go make a cut. That way we can start dumping on the go. But normally with headlands, so since these are the rows where everybody turns around, the sprayer, the planter, any other passes we make in season, a fungicide application, usually our headlands are our least producing or our lowest bushels per acre. So that's usually not a good test of what we're looking at for yield. So we usually wait till we get into our main rows before we try to guess or estimate what our yield or even moisture is for the crop that we're combining. Here's the benefit of what we call cutting land now he's loading me on this side and then on the when he heads back going to the other end of the field he'll have yeah, load the unloading auger on the right side again that way I can unload going both ways it just makes it more efficient and that way he doesn't have to pull out since this is really only my second day of running the grain cart this harvest every year before harvest I put on labels for all the hydraulics in the tractor that way whether i jump in here dad jumps in here mom runs it most of the time but whoever jumps in here knows what levers they got to push to run the auger trick to loading the trucks is to not spill any corn especially here when we're loading on the road by the time i'm finished loading the truck looks like the combine is going to be ready for me to unload some more corn again 
Got another load, Gary. Got it, five. And he's gonna bring that to the farm and I'm gonna go grab another partial load from the combine. I'm back getting some more corn off the combine onto my grain cart, hands-free, not on the steering wheel, not on the throttle controller. If you haven't seen my previous video, uh, grain cart automation where I talk about machine sync and how it doesn't require me to actually drive while I'm getting loaded on. Check that out, but let me show you guys something else cool. So this tractor, like I said, it'll follow and sync up with the combine on its own. But this tractor, when we use it for spraying or planting, we use auto track turn automation. Something that will turn the tractor into the next guidance line hands free. Something that's new this year to the combine. So let's see if we can hop in the combine so I can show you guys what auto track turn automation looks like in that machine. Now I made my way into the combine. That way I can show you guys how this thing drives itself and how the turn automation works for the combine. Using the same guidance lines that I had in the planter, as well as AutoPath, which brings those lines from my planter monitor to here inside the combine, there is no driving or me needing to touch the steering wheel when going end to end in the field. However, when I do get to the end of the round, I do need to raise up the head and normally turn the steering wheel to get into my next 12 rows. But with AutoTrack turn automation, it will turn for me. Coming to the end of this round, Got a, I still gotta manually raise the, the header up, which not really manually, but hit the button. As you can see, hands off the wheel, it's gonna steer me or guide me into the next set of 12 rows, which should be the outside 12 here. That way we can keep on loading on the go. I mean, what can I say? It's gonna show up here where it's heading. Auto track turn automation, high tech farmer. I love this sort of stuff, GPS, anything. This is sweet. Lower the head back down. Once again, hand up the steering wheel. And away we go. This is the first year John Deere's released auto track turn automation for combines. But before that, there was row sense. So I'm gonna step outside the combine, bring you guys down to see what row sense is all about. Row sense is pretty simple. It's these two feelers right here. And those run right here on the stalks of the plant on the row and they run like this and as the stalks go in between there they send vibrations on each one of these feelers to guide the corn head in the combine to know exactly where it needs to go and since it's 30 inch spacing across the corn head one row is good enough to make sure that everything's on track the benefit to us for using auto path over the row sense is two main things number one there is no row sense or similar mechanical uh, solution on the bean head. So using our auto path and our upgraded uh, higher frequency signal on our combine, we now have GPS when we combine our beans. And number two, there's no longer counting rows. Normally when we're combining, it's hard when we're cutting land like this where we just guess, previously had guessed where to go into the field. Now where we have all the rows mapped inside the computer in the combine, we now know exactly where the combine has to go make the most efficient passes across the field. You might be thinking, geez, yeah, all that technology is great, but how much did all that stuff cost? In terms of the combine, it didn't cost us anything. I had to put a software update on the display and play a little bit around with my field and boundary settings inside the display. But after that, it's been working smoothly. So in all honesty, between machine sync and auto track turn automation, machine sync being the one that controls the grain cart, and auto track turn automation, which turns the combine into the next couple rounds, there's not a lot for me to do as a combine operator, which is definitely beneficial for the less experienced operators. Obviously, I'm a big believer in technology, and I quickly adapt to auto track and turn automation in the combine. But I'm wondering what you guys think. If you're a farmer, would you use it? Do you use it? Do you see the purpose of it? For those of you not directly involved in the day-to-day -day being in a combine, what do you think? Are you impressed? Are you not impressed? Do you think I wouldn't even have to be in the chair of the combine at some point? Let me know down below. I'm always curious what other people's perspectives are on the active technology in the field. A couple hours later now, things are going good. The machine's running well. The only problem is the operator is getting tired. 
Oh, I've been sitting down all day, eight, 10 hours from between the combine and the grain cart. So I figured sun's about to go down, make one quick hot lap around the combine here. Check to see what things are looking like behind the combine, but just stretch my legs because it's been a long day. Got my legs stretched. So far we've gotten 70 acres done of this 150 acre field. So we'll keep going for another hour. It's only six o'clock right now and then come back tomorrow. The only benefit is tonight's daylight savings. So we get an extra hour of sleep. So right now it's six o'clock. Tomorrow at this time, it'll actually be five o'clock. We have to move our clocks back an hour, daylight savings. That way there's more daylight during the day to conserve energy up here during the winter. Holding that up for a call of the night. Well, today was a good day of combining. Dad's actually leaving with the combine right now, bringing it home. We didn't get the field done. We got 92 acres out of the 150 done, but we're gonna leave the grain cart out here since we'll finish this field early on tomorrow. Bring the combine home, that way we can fill it up. But that's gonna be it for today's video. I'm gonna get my extra hour of sleep tonight. Thanks so much everyone for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.